I'm Ashley with Heart Music and I'm so glad you're interested in learning piano. In this video, I'll walk you through some basic principles of piano playing. We'll cover how to sit at the instrument, explore the keyboard layout, identify the letter names of the white piano keys, and start forming a good hand shape for playing. I'll also show you how to get a good sound out of the instrument. When we sit at the piano, we want our feet planted flat on the floor and our bodies toward the front edge of the bench. We also want the bench to be the right distance from the piano. If you can make a fist with both hands, stretch out both arms and touch the fallboard or keyboard cover on your piano without leaning forward or backward in order to reach it, then the bench is the appropriate distance from the piano. Next is the height of the bench. The bench should be high enough that our forearms are about parallel, parallel or slightly above parallel, with the keyboard when our hands are in playing position. To get the right height on your bench, usually you'll need to adjust it, but a lot of piano benches aren't adjustable, so what you can do is stack cushions underneath you to allow yourself to sit a little higher on the bench, allowing your forearms to be parallel or slightly above parallel with the key. Now on to our hands. The proper hand position for piano playing is a relaxed C shape. We want to avoid tense claw-like shapes and we also want to avoid flat fingers. You can easily find the right hand shape by cupping your hands on your knees and then lifting your hands, holding that shape and then bringing it up to the keyboard. What you'll notice about the shape that naturally forms on your knee is that the hand is gently curved and your first set of knuckles here forms a nice raised arch. And the whole hand is just nice and relaxed, not a lot of tension. When you place your hand on the keyboard, your wrist should be level with your arm. It should not be raised like this and it shouldn't be dipped down like that. Both of those positions will eventually become really uncomfortable if you play like that. Also notice that my thumbs and my pinkies are resting on their outer edges. Here's a close-up picture of what I mean by firm fingertips when I use that term um, talking about hand position. You can see in the first picture on the left that my index finger is striking a key, but the joint closest to my fingernail is collapsed inward, so that finger is bowing in. This causes the finger to kind of push the key instead of strike the key. So it's not really a good foundation to hold the weight of our arm on. In the second picture though, on the right, you can see that my finger is striking the key again, but this time it's nice and curved. and The weight of my arm is supported on my fingertips. I've also included an illustration of how those finger joints work so that you can better visualize what's going on inside of your hand. Piano finger numbers are pretty straightforward. Each finger gets its own number, starting with our thumbs, which are finger number one. Then our index fingers are finger number two. Middle fingers are finger number three. Ring fingers are finger number four and then our pinkies are finger number five. And you can see in the picture here that our hands are a mirror image of each other when they're on the keys, so that's something to keep in mind as you think of finger numbers while you're playing. Next, we'll look at the layout of the piano keyboard. You probably already know that the piano has black keys and white keys, and that it can play pitches from very low to very high. Low pitches are located on the left side of the keyboard and are usually played with our left hand. High pitches are located on the right side of the keyboard and are usually played with our right hand. If we're moving to the left on the keyboard where the pitches are moving down, we call that moving down the keyboard. If we're moving to the right where the pitches are going up, we call that moving up the keyboard. Back to the black keys. 
They come in sets of two and in sets of three, and knowing this will help us to identify the names of the white keys later on. I like to have students find and play the sets of two and the sets of three black keys all the way up the piano from low to high. You'll use fingers two and three for a set of two black keys and fingers two, three, and four for a set of three. So the left hand will look like this, finger three, finger two, and the right hand will look like this, finger two, finger three. And then for the set of three, the left hand will look like this, finger four, three, two, and the right hand will look like this, finger two, three, and four. For this black key exercise, we'll use our left hand for the low sets of black keys and our right hand for the middle and high sets of black keys. The divider between low and high falls around the middle of the piano underneath the name and logo of the instrument. Starting on the first set of two black keys with fingers three and two in our left hand, we'll start low and work our way up the keyboard from set to set. And then we'll switch to our right hand using fingers two and three and work our way up the rest of the keyboard. The same follows for the sets of three black keys, except now we'll use finger four, three, and two in our left hand. Switching in the middle of the keyboard to fingers two, three, and four in our right hand. Until we've made it to the top of the keyboard. If you are at the piano now, you can pause the video and play the sets of two and three black keys on your own. Once you're familiar with the sets of black keys, you can begin identifying white keys by their letter names. Each white key is part of the musical alphabet. You might already know that the musical alphabet contains the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. The white keys on the piano keyboard move in alphabetical order from A to G. But how do you know which key is which? This is where the black keys come in. They act as a sort of roadmap of the piano. Under each group of two black keys are the notes C, D, and E. Under each group of three black keys are the notes F, G, A, and B. Let's start identifying and playing the white keys now. We'll start with the C, D, E group. What you'll do is find the lowest set of two black keys on the piano, just like we did when we identified our sets of two and three black keys. And then we'll play every C, D, and E from low to high all the way up the keyboard. And we'll use finger number two in each of our hands to do this. And again, we'll switch hands when we make it to the center of the keyboard. It'll look and sound like this. I'm going to show you all the C's as an example. note on the keyboard is also a C. It's hard to tell because it doesn't have a set of two black keys near it, but the very highest note is a C too, so you should play it. You can pause the video now and finish the CDE exercise, moving on to play all of the Ds and all of the Es. Remembering to switch hands in the middle of the keyboard and remembering to use your finger number twos in each hand. Now that you're a bit more familiar with the location of C, D, and E, we'll talk about getting a beautiful sound from the piano. To get a nice full sound, you need to strike each key by letting the weight of your arm fall into the key. Imagine your hand, wrist, and forearm working together like this. You can see that there's some up and down motion with my wrist and that everything is nice and relaxed. You can see that if I push the key instead of strike the key, that no sound comes out. That's why it's important to think about striking and not pushing the key. The motion for striking the key is very prepared and calm. Now 
is also a good time to talk about planning our motions at the piano. As you become more familiar with the distance between keys, you can really control the way your arm moves from note to note so that it's a fluid, beautiful motion. Let's try the C, D, E exercise we just did and add the elements of rhythm and motion. As you play one note, let your eyes guide you to the next. It'll look and sound like this, and you'll notice that now I'm playing each of these C's in the duration of half notes. So C, two, one, two, one, two. And I'm moving kind of in an arch shape from note to note and allowing my eyes and my arm to guide me. And remember to drop the weight of your arm into the key. You can pause the video now and take a chance to try this for yourself on C, D, and E. Now we're going to repeat this exercise with the F, G, A, B group. What you'll do now is locate your lowest set of three black keys, and then you'll play all the Fs, all the Gs, all the As, and all the Bs using your finger number twos, working from low to high and switching from your left hand to your right hand in the middle of the keyboard. When you're ready, Play all the Fs, Gs, As, and Bs in half notes with a rich tone using your eyes to guide you to the next note. It'll look and sound like this, and I'm only going to play the Fs as an example. Remember to drop the weight of your arm into the keys, treating your hand, your wrist, and your forearm as one unit and keeping your fingertips nice and firm so that you can strike the keys instead of push the keys. Once you're comfortable with the C, D, E groups and the F, G, A, B groups, you can combine them all together and play the musical alphabet all the way up the keyboard from the bottom to the top. Conveniently, the lowest note on a full-size keyboard is A, so we can start here and play our way to the very top note of the keyboard, which is a C. I'm going to use finger number two because that helps us keep the nice rounded hand shape we talked about earlier, and I'm going to follow a rhythmic pattern to play this. It'll look and sound like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. repeat that process up the keyboard. Notice that there's a nice bounce to my wrist because I'm putting the weight of my arm into the keys in order to strike them instead of push them. And of course, when I make it to the middle of the keyboard, I'll switch to my right hand. Pause the video now if you'd like and do that exercise on your own. Let's take just a minute to go over everything we've talked about so far. I know it's a lot of information to take in at once, so I want to give you the chance to review and provide you with some ways to check your own progress when you practice on your own. First, we'll go over some checklists that you can use in your independent practice. First is our sitting position. Next is our hand position checklist. And feel free to pause these as you need to so that you can check your own progress. Then last is our tone production checklist. We also want to remember that our fingers are numbered from one to five with our thumbs being number one and our pinkies being number five. And finally, we'll review the black keys and white keys. 
We know the musical alphabet consists of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and that the white keys move in alphabetical order from A to G. The black keys are a roadmap that helps us locate the white keys by their letter name, and the black keys come in sets of two and sets of three. The C, D, E group of white keys is located under a set of two black keys, and the F, G, A, B group is located under a set of three black keys. That's all for this introductory video. Thank you so much for your commitment to learning a new instrument. I figured you'd stared at me long enough during this video, so I'm ending it with pictures of my dog. Her name is Stella, and she loves to sit under the piano while I practice. Stay well, and I'll see you next time.